Hello everyone, and welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia. Morgantown is an interesting city. What it lacks in population, it makes up for in population density. Behind me are the rolling hills that make sort of the backdrop of Morgantown. And right over there is the Monongahela River, the same Monongahela that runs by Pittsburgh. Sandwiched in between the two is the University of West Virginia, with 20,000 students, combined with the 30,000 people who live here full time. That's a lot of people and there isn't a lot of space for them to drive or even to take the bus. So, in the 1970s, the University of West Virginia teamed up with the U.S. Department of Transportation to create a brand new type of transit, something that combined the convenience of a personal vehicle with the efficiency of a mass transit system. They called it the PRT, Personal Rapid Transit. At the time of its opening, Many believed the PRT was the future of transportation. It wasn't. But could it have been? Should it have been? The only way to find out is to go for a ride. So there are five total stations on the PRT. We are at Walnut, which is the north end of the system. HSC is the south end of the system, and there's some stations in the middle. Now, let's say we wanted to go to engineering. On a normal transit system, you would get on here, ride two stops. Simple as that. But the PRT doesn't work that way. The PRT will take you directly wherever you want to go. So let's try it. Here we go. Engineering. Beep. Please enter. Have a nice trip. Okay. So the PRT uses these little electric pods. I'm not sure what the official name is but they're computer controlled and they have uh, rubber tires as well as these uh, guideway things that'll keep them inside the track. As you can see, they're not very big and they can hold about eight people sitting or 14 people total. So the car to engineering leaves in one minute. Gate one, engineering. All right, I think I'm the only one going to engineering. Okay, this is the magic of the PRT. Watch and observe. Bypassing Beechhurst Station, heading straight to our destination. So over there is the uh, southbound platform. Over here is the northbound platform. Health Sciences and Football Stadium Station. A lot of the pods were packed today because there is a home game. But just think about how many people would be driving or maybe taking a campus shuttle or something if they didn't have the PRT here in Morgantown. So one thing I figured out about the PRT is that while you can select your destination on the machine, the uh, collective requests of everybody coming into the station are kind of processed through the scheduling system. So when I came into the station, this screen back here just said stops pending. But when some people came through, 
I selected Towers, some other people selected Beechhurst, and now, four minutes from now, a car is leaving for Towers and a car is leaving for Beechhurst. That gives time for more people who are going in the same direction to uh, come through and get on the car, but it does kind of undermine the promise of personal rapid transit. Transit, where you need to go, when you want to get there. You still have to wait about five minutes, just like with a normal train. Here's one of the cars parked outside the Alumni Center. It's not actually that big, only about the length of a sedan, but a bit taller. And like I said, it just uses rubber tires. There's no rails or anything. So what are my thoughts so far on riding the PRT? I would say the biggest takeaway is that transit belongs in spaces that don't really feel transity, like a big university campus in West Virginia surrounded by strodes, like you can hear the noise of one behind the camera. Um, you know, the, the sort of place where most people drive, where people are coming here um, maybe to go to class, to watch a football game. Not necessarily the type of urban environment that you would normally associate with transit. But transit still works here, and a lot of people use it and really benefit from it. All that said, I've yet to be convinced that the PRT isn't over-engineered. And to put that to the test, I'm going to be riding single hops from Walnut back to the football stadium, stopping at every station and timing when the car is in motion. And then comparing that to how long it takes to ride express from the football stadium back to Walnut. Okay, so I did the math, and if the PRT was replaced with a all-stops train or sky bus or something like those people movers you see in the airport, um, the end-to-end -end time would be about 12 minutes and 14 seconds with a 15-second stop at each intermediary station. By comparison, an express journey on the PRT took 9 minutes and 25 seconds. So there is a little bit of a difference there. Um, is that substantial enough to justify a system with both express trips and local trips and customizable intermediary express journeys? I don't know, maybe just make the train go faster. Ultimately, it's very, very built up to provide only a slightly different experience than one would have with a conventional train or people mover. Anyways, I think the PRT kind of shows that the future belongs not to those who think outside the box and completely innovate a new thing, but rather to those who create things that are efficient and reliable and generally cheap. But hey, where else in the world do you get to ride a gadget bond with that many amped up football fans? Bro, Chuck, Jay, I feel like I'm on a train. <laughs> You're on the train. Is this a train? Anyways, thank you for watching, and before I go, here's some stuff you might like to see.